Hi, I'm Joseph Patrick Daniels, and today I'm going to show you how to use liquid mediums with acrylic paint to extend their drying time, fluidity, and create perfect blends. If you're watching this on YouTube, this exercise is part of a larger course on traditional acrylic painting I've created for beginners. Acrylic painting from beginner to master. If you'd like to watch a preview of the course, just click the link below and it will take you to my site. Okay, I'm sure you're all excited to get started painting, and we're almost there. There's one medium left to cover, and you're ready to paint. In this lecture, I'd like to get you acquainted with the liquid paint retarder you purchased for this course, and I'm going to give you a quick demonstration on how to use it and the value of its properties. As I mentioned earlier, the problem with acrylic paints is that they dry very quickly, which means the piles of paint you mix will start to get chalky fast and the paint on your brush will start to dry while you're still blending it on your canvas. The trick to extending acrylic paint's drying time is to use a combination of techniques to keep your paints wet for as long as possible. So far, you've learned how to apply the gel retarder to your paint piles to keep your values wet, and you should be using a Stay Wet palette. Now I'm going to explain how to use the liquid retarder during the painting process to keep the paint you're applying wet longer so you have more time to blend it, and to make sure your brush strokes have a smooth texture to them. First, I'd like to explain the technical significance to liquid retarder. Acrylics are water soluble and can therefore be thinned by adding water. However, on a cellular level, this isn't necessarily the best choice. All paint is made of two basic components, pigment for color and binder to make the pigment usable as a paint. The binder identifies the paint, for instance, take some pigment and add oil. Now you have oil paint. Take that same pigment, add an acrylic binder, and you have acrylic paint. So there's pigment and binder, and then there's the solvent. Each medium has a solvent that will break it down. For oils, it's turpentine. For acrylic, the solvent is water. But adding water means you're thinning the film of dried acrylic paint and jeopardizing the longevity of your finished painting. Liquid medium is made of glycerol, which keeps it binded. But in my opinion, the biggest benefit of using the liquid medium is that it reduces paint shrinkage. I'm sure you've all noticed that when using acrylic paints, especially on canvas, that little holes open up where you can see the canvas through. That's because you're using water instead of a medium to thin your paints. As the water dries, the paint shrinks. Aside from that, it allows your paint to spread for a longer duration of time than water would which is also why you're going to be preparing your surface with acrylic gel medium instead of gesso in this course, which is going to be very different for those of you who are used to painting on canvas. So first I want to take some of the mystery out of mediums for you. In this example, I'll explain how slow dry fluid retarder works, how to use it and acrylic gel medium together, and the benefits of using them both in tandem to immediately get better results in your paintings. This is a small piece of illustration board I've cut. This side of the line has been primed with gesso, and this side has been coated with the clear leveling gel. In this demonstration, I want to show you the difference between painting on each surface. You don't need a special cup or container for the liquid retarder. I'm just going to put three or four drops right on my palette next to my grayscale. As I mentioned earlier, you're going to be using this medium to dilute your paints instead of water as you work. To do that, just put the tip of your brush into the puddle and mix it into a small amount of the value you want to paint with. First, I'm going to paint a line on the gessoed side of the illustration board. Notice how the paint application is only solid for this long. Then it starts to appear inconsistent and increasingly sparse. I'll just quickly clear my brush off in some water. Next, I'm going to paint a line using the same value on the side coated with clear acrylic medium. Actually, I'll do it up here, and I think I need a bit more paint on my brush. And as you can see at this point, it starts to get streaky and becomes transparent. Streaky and transparent is good, but more importantly, it continues to flow smoothly the entire length of the illustration board. Triple the distance that the same paint went on gesso. And what we want is transparent paint application. 
I know that sounds counterintuitive to most of you, but that transparency is what's going to make it possible for literally anyone to paint realism. And that transparency is going to create an effect that mimics nature and creates that glow that great paintings have. Don't worry, I'll expand much more on that later in the course. We're just getting started. This texture is actually something you want to watch out for. When you see your paint start to do this while you're blending, you should stop and let it dry. I'll explain what to do from there in the next lesson. This is the fluidity that you want to have at all times when you're applying acrylic paint. And this is why you'll be painting on surfaces prepared with clear acrylic medium for this course. Next, I'm going to blend two values together, let's say fifth value down to first or second value, and I'm going to time it to show you how long you have to make a blend. So let's start timing now. First, I've put down the darker value. It's best to work from dark to light with acrylics. Clean my brush. Get used to that, folks. You'll need to clean your brush every time you change values or colors. I started with first, but I suppose it's best to go with second value so you can see it against the white background. Now I'll blend them together. The fifth value pan I put down first is already starting to dry. I'm going to keep blending them together until I start getting a dry, chalky texture in the blend. Which looks like this. That's how you know your paint has started to get tacky, and when you need to stop trying to blend it to avoid creating a bad texture. Once the paint starts to separate and pull like that, all you can do is stop and wait for it to dry. I'll show you what to do from there in a moment. I timed it and it took exactly 54 seconds from when I first started painting to no longer be blendable. So you have about one minute to make each blend when you're painting. And that's using the acrylic retarder instead of water as a medium. If I were using water, that time would be reduced by about a third. Every second counts with acrylic paint, and that's why we're using a combination of mediums to extend its drying time for as long as possible. The trick to managing that drying time is to be compartmentalized with how you work. I know that sounds daunting, but it's actually easy. All it means is only do one blend at a time. Here's how it works. The strategy is simple. Be systematic. Every time you have a line where two values meet, treat that blend individually, like this. I'm going to put down a line outside of this box. So, if I wanted to make a gradient from the outside of this box to the middle, I wouldn't paint around the whole box all at once, and then gradiate it out from the middle outward. I would paint just the line I'm immediately going to blend. Do that blend, then move on to the next line. Now I'll put down some fourth value inside the box where it's going to grade 8. Okay, I'm going to blend these two lines together. By the way, notice the technique I use to make the blend. I make a zigzag between them, and I pull the brush downward through the zigzag in one direction. Don't worry, I'm going to go over all the blending techniques in the next lesson, the blending exercise. I already have to stop. See the texture? Before I try to blend the rest of the edges, I have to wait for that middle square to dry before applying the next line I paint, which will only be seconds. And I'll have to reapply the paint over the middle square as well, which, as you can see, is already ready. Okay, I'm going to reapply fourth value in the square. What you're starting to learn here is how to paint in layers. As you can see, the value in the box is completely opaque now. One of the benefits of painting in transparent layers is that it allows you to paint in a sloppy, free manner and still get solid values. I'll just quickly clean my brush before changing values. And I'll make a gradient for the top line next. Because of that opacity in the middle box, this time the blend is going to be smoother and more solid. Slightly smoother, but this time I can go back over that first blend while the fourth value box is still wet. Watch how much more solid the gradient is on the second pass. As long as I'm only attempting one blend at a time, the process will work. 
So if I continue with this technique all the way around the square, by the time I get to the end, I should have a perfect gradient from the inside outward. And all the blends will get increasingly softer and more solid each time I go over them. But I'm sure you're all excited to start painting, and while I talk, your paints are drying on your palette, so without any further delay, let's move on to the shading exercise. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great tips on traditional drawing and painting techniques. And visit my online art school, the Beginner to Master Art Academy, if you'd like to preview the full course, as well as oil and acrylic painting courses for both beginners and experienced artists. Start your journey today.